Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. I am so happy to see all of you uh, today in this uh, midweek service and I thank God for what God is doing in our midst the the way we are coming uh, it is a a, a, a sure a way that uh, or is it, it's an assurance that we are receiving from the Lord and I want to believe and I want to trust at the end and, uh, and as we continue uh, things will be different uh, in our lives and the Lord is going to do great and mighty things we've been talking about the baptism in the Holy Spirit the baptism of the Holy Spirit that is what we've been talking about and we we are coming slightly to the cross of this this topic and at the end of this topic we will also have a moment I will have a moment probably next Wednesday we'll have a moment to pray for one another we pray for those who have not yet received the Holy Spirit so I am requesting even those who are at home that next Wednesday please come we we'll pray for people to receive the power of the Holy Spirit because that is the beginning and that is where uh, our new chapter in Christianity and another another chapter will begin in our Christianity and we've been continuing with the baptism in the of, of the Holy Spirit and we are looking at now today we will be looking at baptism is the same as the gift of the Spirit that baptism baptism is the same as the gift of the Holy Spirit baptism is the same as the gift of the Holy Spirit as we look at what um, uh, what it is all about it is good we understand when we understand all these things will not be confused will not be confused when we get other people out there they will be telling us different stories and uh, they will be telling you there is nothing like baptism uh, baptism is of the Holy Spirit is not the same it's not the same as the gift of the Spirit and therefore I am saying that baptism in the baptism is the same as the as the gift of the spirit and peter uh called it so clearly and uh, if you read in the book of uh, in the book of acts in the book of acts chapter 2 verses 38 Acts chapter 2, verses 38. We will get to understand these things. Acts chapter 2 and verses 38. This is Peter replying. And he is saying, Peter replied, repent. Be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sin. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And you will receive what? You will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And this was Peter when he was speaking. And when you did the verses 39, you get to see the promise is for you. So when we are talking about the, whole, the, gift, of the, the gift of the Holy Spirit, it is not just for, it is not just for a, a selected people. It is not just for a, 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 a group of people. But it is for you and your children. And for all who are, who are uh, far off, or far off for all who the Lord our God will call. So the gift or the gift or the gift of the Spirit is not only for us, but it is for all of us. And when we look at the early church, when you look at the early church, when you look at the early church, we find that the early church. When you read the book of Acts, when you read the book of Acts, you find that after they received the gift of the Spirit, after they received the Holy Spirit, after they were baptized by the Holy Spirit, after they were baptized and they received the Holy Spirit in their lives, that was the beginning of uh, another chapter for the church. Or oh, that was the, the beginning of the church. And uh, this is after Jesus was taken away from them. And after he was taken, he came and he promised. And he told them, and he told them that you shall receive the Holy Spirit. You will, I am going, and I'm going because of you. I am going for your advantage. And when I go, I will tell the Father to release the Holy Spirit to you. And that is exactly what he did. And in the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, you find that the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples he came upon them and when he came upon them it was fulfilled that which was written or that was 
that which was said in Acts chapter 1 and verses 8. When you look at Acts chapter 1 and verses 8, Act 1 verses 8, and that is part B of it. But you will, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit come on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. So when the Holy Spirit come over somebody, when the Holy Spirit come over you arrive, when the Holy Spirit come over me, when the Holy Spirit come over you, you will no longer be fearful. You will no longer be feeling like you are inadequate. You will be feeling that I am able. And here we see that Jesus telling and uh, uh, Jesus is telling them, but you will receive power. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit. So it is after we have received the Holy Spirit, the power is in us. It is after we receive the Holy Spirit, then we will not be fearful. We will know that we have the power to do what? To be witnesses. To be witnesses. To be talking about, uh, to be talking about uh, who Jesus is. And we get to see in Acts chapter 11 and verses 16 and 17, we'll see power at work. We'll see power at work. And when we read Acts chapter 11 verses 16, then I remember what the Lord had said. This was Peter. He remembered what the Lord had said. And he said, John, he remembered these words. He remembered these words. And he said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And then when you go to verses 17, so if, so if God gave them the same gift as he, as he gave us, who believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I to think I could not, I could oppose God. Let me, let me give you a, a, a scenario of what had taken place here. What had happened is that Peter, at this time, he, he, he preached, he was preaching the word. And when he preached, this time he went and preached in Joppa. And he preached, and the Holy Spirit had sent him to Joppa. And when he was sent there, the Bible says that when he went there, he preached to people. And when he preached to them, six men received Jesus Christ and they were baptized. In other words, six men were, were um, they, 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 they received Jesus. They, were, they, were, they got saved. And after they got saved, they were baptized. And when they were baptized, now when you read from verses 1, you get to understand this of chapter 11. You see now, when the Holy Spirit, uh, when, when he preached to them, this is what happened. Now these men accompanied Peter. And remember, Peter at this time, when you read verses 1, going, going down, when you read going up, verse 1, 2, 3, and going forward, you discover that the Holy Spirit had appeared, or God had appeared to Peter in a vision. And Peter had seen things going up and down. And he, he, he saw what we call the unclean. And this is now... The beginning, and remember at this time, at this time, already Paul was converted. You remember? Already Paul had received the salvation. Paul had already received Christ and he had left because he had left the place and he had, he had gone to Tarsus. He had gone to Tarsus and that is where he was staying. And when you read verses chapter 10, you discover that Barnabas had already gone, or Barnabas went to encourage Paul. Because Paul was called to minister to all people. In other words, he was called to minister to the Gentiles and the Jews. But here, where we are, we are now, where we are reading, is that we discover that Peter thought that he was only, or salvation was only meant. Together with other Jews, they had, they had thought that salvation was meant for the Jews only. It was meant for the Jews only. And that is why God had to appear to Peter so that he will understand that salvation and the Holy Spirit is not only for the Jews. And that is why here are the six men the six men in Acts chapter 11 are now, after 
Peter had spoken to them, after he had spoken to them, they received the Holy Spirit. After they received the Holy Spirit, you find that uh, Paul, Peter had, re had to report. At this time, he was actually reporting to the church in Jerusalem that he's, he ministered, he preached, and after he preached, the word, after he preached the word, six men received salvation. After they received salvation, then the Holy Spirit came over them. And they received the Holy Spirit. And what I am saying is, is that the Holy Spirit is not for a certain group of people. When he, was, he was, when he was released from heaven by our God, when he was released to come, he was not only released to the, a certain group of people. And this time, he was not released for the Jews, but he was released for the Jews and to other people. And that is why, from this, from where we are, from where we are reading, from where we are reading, that is in Acts. From where we are reading, that is in Acts chapter 11, verse 16, verse 11. You see that he is telling them, or he is actually telling them, that this is a gift. And this gift is not for a certain group. It is for all of us. And I want to say this, because I am insisting on this, is that the Holy Spirit is for you. It's a gift placed before you. You receive it, and after you have received him, after you have received him, eh, I am I'm like uh, the King James Version who refers the Holy Spirit. You remember we were saying that the King James Version referred the Holy Spirit as it. You remember we said that? The personality of the Holy Spirit. You remember we said that? Now, when you receive the gift, this gift, when you receive him, he will make everything uh, different and he will, he will, uh, he will change your, your life and he will change my life. Um, remember, after this man received the Holy Spirit, this is now the fulfillment of what was said in Acts chapter 1. Now, these people had now to move from now Judea. They had to move from Judea and they began to go, they went to Samaria. And remember, just for, for, your, for your knowledge, just for your knowledge, is that Israel, at that time, it was divided into three regions. Three. Three regions. There was Galilee, there was Samaria, and there was, there was Judea. Now, Samaria, Galilee was at the, at, at the north, um, and then, then Samaria was at the middle, and then Judea. Are you getting what I'm saying? Then, so, the Holy Spirit was to come over the church, because he came over the church. And at this time, there was a lot of comfort. There was a lot of power. Power was so much manifested in this, in this early church. And you get to see now they were concentrating. They were only concentrating with the, the, this, this three region. And, and mostly one region. That is where you find that now there is, um, there is Jerusalem. They were concentrating only with Jerusalem, which was in the north. They were concentrating only with Jerusalem. And therefore, they had not gone to Samaria. That is in the middle. And they had not gone down to, uh, to Judea. That is why now they had now to go. They had, the Holy Spirit they had to come over them so that they will be able now not only to to preach in, in, in these three regions, but also to get out of the three regions. And that is why you find that now God had to make sure that Paul is being converted. And Philip also is also converted. And you find that Philip is... 
Philip also got converted and he after being converted he was able the holy spirit came over him and he was able to speak to an ethiopian eunuch and when he talked to the ethiopian eunuch now you find that now the holy spirit is getting out of the very region and the and now the holy spirit began to spread the Holy Spirit began to move from now the region that is the Israel and now he began to move to other places. And it is now fulfilled that was which was spoken in Acts chapter 1 and verses 8 that and you will receive power. And I'm saying and you will receive power when the Holy Spirit come over you and you begin and you will be witness. You will be the witness or you will be a witness in your own hometown and then you will go to Judea and then you will go to Samaria it was not easy to preach in Samaria because they considered that is a, that was a place of a mixed race that is a mixed race and they had no business with the Samarians so they never they never believed that the Samaritans would receive the Holy Spirit but I'm saying this when the Holy Spirit come over us, because he is going to come over our lives, he is going to come when we allow and when we accept him as a gift, when we accept him as a gift to us, and we say, Holy Spirit, come to me now as my gift. And when you accept him as a gift, one of the things that is going to happen is that you'll be empowered you will be full of power. The church in Jerusalem had a lot of problem because they never believed that even Paul had been converted. They also never believed that even Peter had spoken and they began, when you read chapter 11 and chapter 10, chapter 11, mostly chapter 11, you discover that they began even to confront Peter and they began to tell him, no, it is not possible for them to receive the Holy Spirit. What am I saying? Some people will even begin to doubt whether you have received the Holy Spirit. Some people will even begin to say, you have not received the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And this is the beginning, and this will be the beginning of the church. And remember, when we were having bulletins, and some of our... our uh, our letterheads, those people who have our letterheads, down there it is written, and you will receive power. When as we are saying, hmm? in the in the in the in the in our head in our headed letter, down there it it talks about Acts chapter one and verses eight, and now you will receive power when the Holy Spirit shall come over you, and you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria. This is what I was seeing. Can I say it? I was seeing you being filled by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Right before you came, I was seeing the power of the Holy Spirit coming over your life. And when he come over your life, you will not be limited by anything. When the Holy Spirit come, there is nothing that will limit you. You will not be limited by criticisms. Hallelujah. You know, you know, one of the things that the devil uses is that when you do not have the Holy Spirit and you are serving God, you will be criticized. And when you are criticized, you will, you will just be discouraged and you say, Kwani, Kwani yod your church to pekeake. But the moment you have the Holy Spirit, even when they speak, you will be strong. Why? Because you know. And you are sure that the Holy Spirit is over your life. And he is causing you to grow. Hallelujah. You know, you know one, of the things that, uh, one of the things that the Holy Spirit does is that he does not remove the wisdom in you. He does not, what he does is that he, he uses the wisdom in you and then he comes and adds more wisdom in your life. He 
does not remove the education in you, but what he does, he comes and encourages you in that education, and you become a very sharp man, very sharp guy. Bwana Yesu asifiye sana. When the Holy Spirit come over, you arrive. What am I saying? Is that we will not be limited by anything. We will not be, will not be uh, stopped by things that are spoken. We will not be stopped by, by, by the storms. We will be going in the storms. Bwana asifiye sana. And you know what happened in the book of Acts? When the Holy Spirit came over the church at that time, when the Holy Spirit came over the church that time, even when the storms came, because they were persecuted, they were, if you read Acts, you find that persecution came. Persecution came. And persecution came not before the Holy Spirit, but it came after the Holy Spirit had come over them. But as we are saying, persecution came when the Holy Spirit came over them. Why? Because at that time, they were, you remember, in, we are saying, we are saying, when you read the book of John chapter 21, when you read John chapter 21, you find Peter, you find Peter, after Jesus has been crucified, and uh, he was no more, you remember that time? You remember the scenario? The scenario was, is that that time Peter had not received the Holy Spirit. That time in the book of John chapter 21, Peter, or Simon, this time was Peter, he had not received, even if he was called Peter, the rock, he had not received the Holy Spirit. That is why you find that he is denying Jesus three times. That is why you find that he is telling the others, the Akinadadan here and the rest, he is telling them, listen, me, I'm going back fishing. This time, he had not received the Holy Spirit. That is why he is telling the others, Shikseni, na munierewe vizuri, mimi narudi kutega. Mimi narudi badu kutega. I want to, I want to go back to my career. Hallelujah. There are so many people who have abandoned. They were so good in the church. They have abandoned Christianity. They have abandoned their ministry. Why? Because they were doing ministry without the power of the Holy Spirit. And therefore, this, when, when storms came, they got discouraged. And when they got discouraged, they say to hell with this kind of ministry. To hell with this this church, I am going to the religion. You know, there are people who have been in Pentecostal. They have been there, but they were not baptized by the Holy Spirit. And because they were not baptized by the Holy Spirit, they thought that they can do it without the Holy Spirit. And after storms, because normally storms will come, persecution, and all these things will come. And some of them have already departed and they have gone back to the religion. When I'm talking about the religion, is that those, there are those people who do not believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. There are those churches that do not believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. Those who have the power, those who are filled by the power of the Holy Spirit, they will be strong. They will be strengthened. They will be strengthened. Even when the storms come from every side, they will say, we will make it. We'll move forward. Hallelujah. Remember after Peter and the rest of the disciples received the Holy Spirit, even when they were persecuted, some of them, some remained in Jerusalem. Others, and especially those ones who received the Holy Spirit after the laying hands, after the laying of the hands upon them by the, by the apostles, they were so strong, some of them came, even like in a Philip, they, they came to Ethiopia. And the gospel was preached in Ethiopia at those, those days, during those days. Hallelujah. I, I do not know how the Holy Spirit is speaking to you today. But I want to believe that the Holy Spirit, when he comes over you, you will not be, you will be what the politicians say, 
you will be unstoppable. You cannot be stopped by anything. That is what the, Holy, the, the politician says. They are unstoppable. They cannot be stopped. But that one was not in the NIC. The unstoppable. So what I'm saying is that we need the Holy Spirit because he's a gift given to us. And not only for me, it is even for my children. And not only for my children, even for those people who are going to believe after this. What has been done? Even the people that will come after this and they believe, they will also receive the Holy Spirit. What has been done? When you receive this Holy Spirit, you will not be troubled. You will, sometimes you find things that are so hard. But you'll be saying, I am strong. Hallelujah. The one that says, when you are weak, you are strong, it becomes real. I remember the church, the early church, after they received the Holy Spirit. The church grew, grew daily through the bold witness. You see, when, when, when the Holy Spirit is upon you, you will be bold. You will, not be, you will not be weak. You will be bold. You will be courageous. And they were so courageous, they witnessed. And Peter witnessed together with John. And they witnessed about Jesus. And they, the church at that time, they did marvelous things. They loved each other. Hallelujah. When as we say now, when the gift of the Spirit is upon the church, people love each other. Unconditionally. They love each other. They do not see weaknesses of each other, but they look at each other as a strength. Hallelujah. And the church at this time, they loved each other. And that is why you discover, even at to, to a certain point, they were able to distribute. Nobody, no one amongst them who was suffering. I'm not telling you to go and sell your, your properties. I'm not telling you to go and sell the things that you have. I'm not telling you to go and bring what you have into the church. But what I'm, what I'm saying is, I am saying that that church... Because of the, the love that was in believers, the church grew. It grew so fast. Let me tell you the secret of the church growth is that when we love each other. And the secret is when we have the Holy Spirit. When we have the Holy Spirit, there will be minimum fighting. Very minimal. Very minimal. Uyo nakugoka kichwa. Uyo nakugoka. I am there to support you. You are there to support me. Everybody is there to support the other. Why? Because all of us are filled by the Holy Spirit of God. Even sometimes you will not be required even to know. You will not be required even to tell people what you are going through. They will just know what you are going through. Because the Holy Spirit who is in you is the same Spirit who is in me. Therefore, he will be telling me what you are going through. Hallelujah. Praise the name of our Lord. Baptism is for all Christians. Baptism is for all Christians. We say that baptism is the same as the gift of the Spirit. And we are saying, finally, we are saying baptism is for all Christians. Peter claimed that the promise of the Spirit is for all believers. Act where we have read Act 239. He did not say it is only for the apostles or for the 120 disciples. No. He said it is for all Christians. The promise is for you. This promise, this promise, this promise is for you. Those present and uh, your children, those absent, those yet to be converted. 
It, is, it also includes all who are far off. Praise the name of Allah. I, I think I had said all this. And in Acts chapter 10 and Acts chapter 11 show, shows that this gift is for the Gentiles as well and for the Jews. And we need Acts chapter 10 and verses 45. When you read Acts chapter, chapter 10 and verses 45, it says, The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit has been poured out even to the Gentiles. Hallelujah. How I pray that the Holy Spirit shall be poured to each and every one of us. Let me tell you, you will not, you will not struggle at all. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You will not struggle in all areas of your life. In your Christian life, you will not struggle. You may struggle in doing businesses and all other things, but even at that time, you also say, yes, Holy Spirit, help me to do this business. You will not struggle when the Holy Spirit comes over your life. You will not struggle to do ministry. You will not struggle even to exercise your gift in Jesus' name. I want to believe that all of us, who, those who have been following me, and those who have walked this journey with me, that one of the things that will happen is that we are going to release ourselves to the Holy Spirit. And when we release ourselves to the Holy Spirit, I will teach you briefly on Wednesday. I will teach you briefly on Wednesday how to receive the Holy Spirit. And then you will receive the Holy Spirit. So don't fail to come. I want us to pray. I want us to pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. And I give you all the praise. Help us this far. And I believe that we have understood that this gift is for all of us. It is not for our chosen people. It is for all of us. And therefore, Lord, we pray that you may help us to receive the Holy Spirit as I teach on, the, on how to receive and when I pray that Lord Jesus, you will fill your children with the power of the Holy Spirit. We thank you and we give you the praise in Jesus' name.